Welcome back everyone to the BD1P Binding of Isaac modded series. Today is going to be a random normal character run for win number 8 in episode number 316 I believe. Your question of the day is going to be, put your answer in the comments down below, what is the craziest prediction you have ever made in general in your life? We get deleted. Interesting. Uh, what are we going to use? Are we going to use Crypto Locker for no red hearts but concealed effects? Are we going to use Spy Wiper for corrupted form? Why don't we, why don't we do the, um, the Jerusalem slash Eden variant? I like that idea. We get Mucormycosis and uh, Little Horn along with a strange active item up there. Oh, I'm taking Tech X, baby. Hell yeah. We don't need to roll anything in here. I don't know what that active item is going to do. Uh, I hope it's really good, though, in the future. I have a small feeling it might roll our entire build, but, like, only one way to find out, right? But anyways, um, for my answer for today's question of the day, believe it or not, last night I was watching a movie. I know, a shocker. I'm trying to work my way through a list of, like, it's around 80 to 90 movies I want to watch by the end of this year. Some new, some old, and uh, I was watching a movie called Thelma and Luis last night, which was, by the way, a fantastic movie all around. Like, it might be one of my favorites that I've watched out of my list. I've watched a couple of really cool ones recently. Uh, sure. I, you know what? I might even just, like take the bible early on because I, I don't know what this means what does this mean now we're the forgotten um okay <laughs> so we're the forgotten now i'm gonna just uh, take this and i think we'll go oh, we don't need the bible take that instead because you already have flight as the soul we're the forgotten somehow now great great character actually surprisingly my favorite character in the entire game uh, just about so new character new run fantastic, but um, I honestly a really really good movie uh, It's about a I'm not gonna give any spoilers here obviously besides one and I'll, I'll, I'll preface that beforehand, but um, It's these two girls who are trying to go on vacation together to escape their miserable lives back home and um, long story short one of them gets assaulted and the other girl pulls out a gun and uh, shoots him and kills him and it's kind of like them running from the law for like two hours and three minutes, which it, it sounds very basic, but the premise is is crazy good and it works really well in that kind of setting. Um, and it, I would say about like 45 minutes in, this is where it gets a little bit spoilery. They're driving down a road. These guys are so fucking loud, by the way. They're driving down a road in like Texas and here's here's a spoiler for you. So you might, might want to mute it now if you haven't watched the movie and you plan to. Um, I, I think to myself, this movie can only end in one way, and it's with these two characters driving their, their Pontiac off a cliff, and that was like a joke in my head, like a joke to myself in my head, and an hour passes, and the end of the movie comes, and it ends with these two characters driving off a cliff in their Pontiac, and like, it wasn't like it was, it was foreshadowed at all it was just out of the blue there were no cliffs before this scene there was like no indication of that happening before this scene it just fucking happened and it blew me away because i was like holy shit how, how do you call something it was just so random and it probably isn't my my like, greatest prediction of all time but it's the one that i have in my head because it was the most recent one obviously right but just like what the fuck how do you call something that overtly specific that's insane to me. I'm gonna go for um, Angel Deal Chance here, by the way. Right away, give it to me. No, not yet. We can go kind of deep here. Please. Actual, terrible, god awful game. Awful, bad game. We should have gotten. We had two chances to get a chance there. Uh, I'm just gonna pop this now and do it again. Dead Sea Scrolls. I. Uh, all right, rapid fire here. The shop is going to give us member card. Nope, I was wrong. That's really good, though. Actually, both of these are really, really good. Can I maybe get glowing hourglass? Ooh, it's a special statue. You know what? I'm going to go kind of deep on this because uh, if I bomb you, like, I think it's like three or maybe it's five times. 
you drop a golden trinket or just a lot of money. It's enough money for us to buy this with car battery. Again, I don't know how it's going to work for our, like, synergistically, but still pretty cool to see. We can walk into here, potentially, and get, all right. Uh, actually, you know what? Get out of there. For a increased planetarium chance for your next floor. Uh, this would have been a great room to see. I was going to use my chariot card against a blood bank in there, but not going to happen. All right, go and fight your boss. But Thelma and Luis was, um, it wasn't like it was at first... To me, at least, anything super crazy or, or special. Well, both of these are <laughs> no takers, please. I'm going to fly into here. Like, it, it started off, and it was like, I think it was made in the 60s, if, I was, if I'm not mistaken here. And um, it definitely had a really cool, like, 60s vibe going for it. Um, like, the, the, the costume design and, like, the, the cars, the, the setting, the, the buildings, it was all very, like, cool and 60s. But it wasn't, like, you know, super dragging me in yet. Uh, and then, like, a couple of character interactions happen where you kind of learn that, like, Thelma is more of just the, uh, the stuck-at-home girl who wants to have some fun. And Luis is more of, like, the mature, like, mother figure to Thelma. And, um, it's a really, really cute dynamic. I think that, like, that sort of one friend is kind of dumb and a little bit naive and the other one is like hardened and kind of uh, like a caregiver that kind of dynamic is one of my favorites in films because oh it was almost really bad actually it was really bad for us great um that dynamic right there has spawned countless like great shows movies relationships like just so many i almost got hit there again that was must have been like frame perfect uh then i really like it a lot well there goes our deal chance because this motherfucker blew him up that's great you're a great player bd1p you just, you know how to make every single we could have used the hourglass there i'm an even worse player now Ooh, is that chocolate milk forgotten tech x right there oh this run's gonna be something Oh, we don't get Tech X as, uh, the Bone Man anymore, though. But still, Chocolate Milk Forgotten is one of the coolest synergies in the entire game. It makes our sword, uh, real big. That was, I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm a little bit jumpy, to be honest with you guys. I got done streaming again today. I was, uh, a little bit tired because I've been streaming a lot recently, um, but I, I had a, like a, a good stream. I, a couple of old friends came by. I got some good, like, YouTube videos stocked up for that stream. I mean, it was it was good. And then I finished, and I was like, I've just been, I've been doing too much. Like, between streaming and recording every day, plus, like, working on, like, scripted videos, it's, it's a little bit too much, and I'm not really managing my time well. Like, he, here's a, a preface for you. Uh... I recorded a week's worth of Isaac runs four days ago, uh, like just to have in the backlog. And I chose to not record Isaac for that entire week. And I ended up being back down to one video in the middle of my stream marathon. And I was like, shit, I got to stop the stream to go record Isaac now. It's not a, it's not a very good uh, mentality to have there, but also like it's a bit to balance. It's kind of why I want to start just streaming the Isaac streak and putting the VOD on YouTube instead. But that might piss some people off, so I'd rather not do that in the current moment. Again, I said it before like a week ago, if the, the main channel becomes profitable enough on its own, I will probably... You're a mimic. Yeah, you are. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to take that, because with our current charge shot, that might be pretty deadly. And we have a decent bomb economy right now. But if the, if the main channel ever becomes that um, profitable... Where it can support me on its own, I will definitely, I think, be using that to just, uh, the streak to more increase people to my stream, as opposed to just putting it on YouTube alone and it not hitting that large of an audience. But that's that, we already talked about that like a week ago. It's not worth revisiting just yet. I could, I'm gonna bomb you again. You know what? That's fine. We're gonna bomb you again. I want a golden trinket and I want, I want golden cracked crown. That's what I want right now. One more. Come on. Come on, baby. You need more bombs than that? Maybe I will go grab butt bombs, you asshole. Let's go grab butt bombs for this guy. We, we... Oh. Because you're a mimic pedestal, the item changed into Monstro's Lung, my favorite item in the entire game? This is the greatest day of my life. 
All right, why don't we just, um, I think you just go fight your boss in his current state. The run's going really, really well. I would like to get one more bomb for that, uh, greed statue back there, but I think he already despawned, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we, we win this run already. Like, HP is looking, honestly, pretty damn good. Uh, DPS is also looking pretty damn good. We could probably go sacrifice if we want to as well, although I don't know what good it's gonna do. So we really have a lot of HP to spend. Although HP is looking good. Um, I'll take that, sure. I don't think spending HP is gonna go over too well with our current build, but we can grab this, might as well, and then start going a little bit ham here. So we can go decently deep right now. And if it doesn't work, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like mega deep right now. And take this pill when you get a hit again. Sure. Ooh. Okay. Nice. There was no... It's not worth it. So hourglass out. Get all of your HP back. Uh, nothing in there was worth the HP you spent. So just simply move on down. But going back to our um, movie talk, I can't open this, can I? Nope, can I open this? Yeah, you know what, that's worth, I think, two keys, whatever. Not a, not a huge, huge deal. Um, I thought it was a great movie. It's not my favorite movie of all time because I just think that there were moments that I was definitely a bit kind of just like, eh, like, you know, I, I could be um, having a bit more fun, but in general, like, the only dull moments in the movie were, like, necessary dull moments. If a movie is high-octane the entire way through, it's you're gonna be, I think, a little bit, like... It's gonna feel very, um... I don't want to say the word immature, but if a movie, like, the entire time is just, like, action sequence, action sequence, like, constantly throughout the entire thing, it's gonna feel a bit cheaply made, because it's like, oh, well, what do they have if not just action? Like, there's no plot, there's no relations it's simply just action the entire way through and i don't want to watch a movie i don't even like action that much there's some really cool like action scenes and movies that i enjoy a lot but primarily um I i'm more into just like plot and how they tell a story i guess in my eyes Ooh, thank you so much canine of wrath Every enemy in a room explodes, taking 15 damage. Uh, it's not terrible to have in my inventory, I guess. But, uh, like, for example, I've been watching the Mission Impossible movies, like, because the new trailer for Mission Impossible looks insanely good. Like, again, Tom Cruise is kind of a weird dude. Opens, uh, I mean, whatever, sure. Um, Tom Cruise is kind of a weird guy, but this dude is so committed to acting, whether it be Top Gun. Chance to shoot a barrage of five tiers. Each tier in the barrage deals a third of your damage. I mean, there's no downside to that, right? We're going to have extra tiers. That sounds pretty good. Reverse judgment or foil judgment. Oh, we can do both of those. Hold judgment. on. Do that. Judgment. Do it again. And then honestly, dude... Adios, amigo. <laughs> You're all going down for free drops. Watch this. The bombs just keep happening? He didn't spawn any more bombs? Oh, that's kind of sad. Didn't make it all the way up there, I guess. Well, we got a lot of HP out of that. Um, got some money, got some bombs back. You know what, dude? What did I... Oh, there's a maggot up there, you fool. Uh-oh. You're safe up here. Be careful. The only ones alive are these guys. This is exactly what I planned it to be like. Hill is... Luck down. All right, cool. Um... Like, and I, but I, I love Tom Cruise movies. I watched uh, Mission Impossible 1 and 2 recently. I watched both the first two. One was really good. I would argue to be uh, maybe like an 8 to 9 out of 10. 2 was closer to like a 6, I would say. 2 wasn't bad at all. Like, there were some cool scenes, especially when he infiltrates that hideout. But there were definitely moments in 2 where it was like... What people in the early 2000s thought like future tech would look like, for example, I think I just, I think I actually just talked about this recently. Um, like maybe like even an episode ago. I don't know. I'm not going to go over it too much here, but like there's definite moments where it's, it's a little bit dated, but one is not dated. I think I just like recently 
talked about this. So I'm not going to talk about it any further. Uh, but War of the Worlds was when I watched as well. Another Tom Cruise movie. It's an alien movie, which is weird because I I don't think I've ever watched, or I, I don't all usually watch, like, extraterrestrial-based movies. In fact, I've never even seen the Alien series of movies, one of the, the cult classic alien type horror movies. Like, apparently they're, they're decently good. Um, it's like Alien, Alien Covenant, like Prometheus, like that series. I've never seen a single movie from that, but I think the only other like extraterrestrial base, I don't want to say Alien movie because it could mean like the Alien franchise, but I watched E.T. when I was a kid and I thought it was pretty good and that might be it. Now War of the Worlds is another alien based movie where instead of it being like they know that aliens exist, there could be a planetarium. You don't want to skip out on that. Um, the aliens kind of like surprise Earth. I think Morgan Freeman does the narration in the movie uh, in the beginning and the end. Oh, hold on. Wait, there we go. Um, which was definitely surprising. I don't think I've ever, like, I, I never thought about Tom Cruise and Freeman being in the same movie. But uh, the plot is that, oh, what a cool and not terribly designed uh, turret. Um, the general plot is that, like, one day a bunch of weird, like, thunderstorms are happening around Earth. They, they start in Ukraine, they head over to, to America. And one of these storms knocks out every electronic device, uh, including they like, get fried a bunch of car starters and stuff like that um, near the main character, Tom Cruise's house. And so he goes out to investigate like what's going on out there. And in the middle of the town square, this big ass like alien mech uh, climbs out of the ground and just starts blasting everything. And it's like a survival movie where he's trying to um, get him and his kids to Boston, to, the, to uh, their, their mom and his ex-wife's house, to be safe there, while also dodging all of these crazy-ass alien things happening. It sounds like a very basic and dumb movie, and at parts it definitely is a little bit dumb and a little bit basic. But, I don't know. Is it wrong to enjoy dumb and basic things sometimes? All right, the shop is going to give us a well-deserved BFF. We can also... Oh, we have restock. I forgot we, like, literally just bought restock. There's birthright. And we also were getting so much... Um, so many stats from this because we do have the, the keeper's uh, ball sack. What is this? Genie lamp? Ooh. Well, here's the thing. We're going to go to beast in this run for a couple of reasons. Number one... I installed a very uh, unique new mod that I want to try out on the Beast fight. Well, maybe we won't go to Beast on this run. We'll go on tomorrow's run, because this run is not very well suited for Beast. We don't really have, like, a ton of range, and our tier rate is completely shot, which you kind of need tier rate to fight Beast in a lot of his forms. So we're going to wait to go to Beast, but we do have a very unique and cool mod made by somebody in this community uh, for the Beast fight. So... We're checking that out tomorrow, but I think for today, despite having Keeper's Sack and Restock, we don't really have that much money left over to warrant going to next floor shop. We're just going to go for the regular path to keep ourselves on a nice time schedule here, but I do want to find ways to use our money. Wow. We can just infinitely... What is happening? Why are these guys all spawning batteries? Um, well, here would be a fun idea. If there's a mimic pedestal in this item room, does the item stay the same? It seems to. Why don't you save your, well, actually, we have a three dice room. I just realized back earlier on the floor. This is going to become an interesting depth. I don't know why all those men just started dropping batteries everywhere. Uh, I'm not the culprit there, I swear. But I'm not going to complain because we have a full floor, um, like, key bomb coin consumable. Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Reroll we can use to maybe get more money, to maybe get some cards, some pills, some runes, God forbid, some item-based chests. Let's go give it a try right now. I do first want to go into here and look at our traveling salesman. We are one penny short of buying, uh, there it is, mini mush from our man down here. I will take that. And let's go reroll everything else. Giving us a key, cool, 
And in this room, oh yeah, uh, the belt for one. Random stuff. Ooh, grab this. Just you know, just pop it all open. It can it cannot be anything bad. It can be actually terrible for you. Is the thing. Uh, we only got one item here, really. That's kind of sad. Is there a... Oh, we got two items there. I don't see a dice shard or a pair throw anywhere to roll that stuff, though. Retro Vision's hilarious. Pretty Fly's really good. Money Bomb card. Hierophant's insane. I don't know why I popped it there. Moon card's nice. Okay. Ooh, an Emperor card, though? To skip a floor? You know me. I'm, I'm speed, baby. Tears Up is also very well needed. And I think... We are good just to go and fight the boss right now. We're zooming. We're not really zooming, I would say. Oh, actually, we can make boss rush with this Emperor card. We're going that fast, really? I didn't think we were going that fast. More batteries. Gotta love it. Uh, take your Polaroid. Go into here. Prism and Delirious. <laughs> uh, we'll just take with a balance there. I, I kind of like my current active item. And you give me, wow, nothing I want. Go to your next floor, pop your Emperor card right away and pray for goodness. Come on, baby. You know what I want. You know what I want. I, what is happening on this run? Like what? Hey, you know what, dude? It's not my problem. If we win, there are batteries spawning everywhere. What item could be doing that? Are we spun, by the way? We're almost spun. I'm looking at our items right now. I don't know what's spawning these batteries. I have no, like, increased battery drop chance for anything. That'd be weird if I did. I, unless they change birthright, brother, I'm out of ideas. All right, why don't we try to grind for an increased angel deal chance while we're already in this room? Uh, oh, we get the Polaroid invincibility going on. My absolute favorite. This fight, while, while you're invincible, fight these enemies up here. Uh, we're gonna go mostly on the soul hearts here. They should be able to either get the increased chance or just the raw teleport there. Out of three sacrifice rooms, one of you has to give me the, the teleport. This is it right here. Uh, we'll go one more. We'll go one more. This is the worst run of all time. All of my items are bad. All of my luck is bad. This is the worst run I've ever played. Zack is better than this character, dude. Like, the, the, the hardest character in the game. That's forgotten. On this run. This is the worst run of all time. Look, I mean, look how bad my items are. Monstrous Lung makes your tier rate worse, so it's a bad item. Uh, Tech X makes your tiers rate worse, so it's a bad item. Mucromycosis makes your tiers purple, which is not a good color, so it's a bad item. I mean, this is just a terrible run altogether, honestly. I would not recommend this seed. Uh, seed being uh, GRNGTG2C to anybody, honestly. It's terrible. No good. Uh, Void Portal. Nah, just go to your Polaroid path. This run's good, but it's not good enough to take on Hush, that's for damn sure. Ay ay ay. There's the piss. The piss is back. It's gravitating towards me. Is the piss its own, like, entity? The piss is gone. In the floor now. Rest in peace. But uh, to end up our discussion today, I think out of the two movies I've watched the most recent, that being Thelma and Luis and um, War of the Worlds, Thelma and Luis is obviously the better movie. It's got a better premise, it's got better characters, but you can never not have fun with Tom Cruise. Like... He's got that, 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 like, asshole smirk that makes you want to hate him, but he's just too, like, fun. Like, having a, a character or an actor, I guess, who's never explicitly serious about anything makes the movies have a much lighter tone. Now, War of the Worlds had a pretty serious tone for a while, although, because it was, like, Tom Cruise, I was never, like, super involved with like the characters themselves like he has two kids in that movie he has a daughter and a son and uh both of them or one of them like spoiler alert uh is thought to be dead when an alien blows up like a hill that he was standing on but ends up being alive when that character supposedly died like i, I didn't really feel anything because i was like the kid was number one kind of an asshole and number two you don't really know a lot about them like, the movie does a great job explaining 
the family relationships through just like how uh Tom Cruise's character and his wife's uh, character, like, interact with each other. Like, you know, like, there's a stepdad in the mix. He's kind of a jealous uh, father. Like, all these kind of things. You get a good idea of that, but not necessarily where the characters come from. The son is very obviously an angsty teen uh, who doesn't like his dad that much. And the daughter is um, a very, like, level-headed kid unless they're put under stress. So the daughter understands how the world works, but cracks under pressure. Like that you understand. But like the inter like the interlocking of how the characters interact with each other doesn't often make a lot of sense. Like it's almost implied at the end that the only reason the kids have now grown to like the dad is because the dad like didn't let them die, which as a father I mean, he did the bare, <laughs> the bare minimum there. I mean, it maybe made the son, like, realize he had, you know, affection for his father. But end of the day, man, like, if someone gets me somewhere and helps me stay alive, I'm gonna be appreciative. But at that point, I also helped them stay alive, too. What is this piss? I don't understand. Oh, it's Mega Satan time, by the way. Um, I, I just, like, it's... If I had a long history of not liking my dad. And then my dad, like, helped me stay alive, which a father should do. It wouldn't make me, like, instantly have a higher understanding or appreciation for my dad. It would definitely be a better relationship going forward. Like, at the end of the movie, the kid goes, like, I love you, dad. Which, the only other, like, line of dialogue he ever spoke to his dad emotionally was how he hated him so much. Which, I don't know. I, I can understand. There's so many batteries, dude. I can understand, like, where that, you know, reaction of, like, we almost died but we're alive now, that kind of severe action can lead somebody, but it just, it didn't really feel in character to me. Again, I'm not a movie writer or, like, any kind of critic. I'm just a guy who watches movies and has a good time with them. So, take what I'm saying with a very, very large, like, grain of salt, but to me... The characters were not very interesting in the movie. Like, I could have been watching anybody try and survive the apocalypse, and I'd be having fun. It's not like The Walking Dead. Oh, nice. It's not like The Walking Dead where Rick Grimes... You, you want to be watching Rick Grimes and Michonne, whereas, like, watching just anybody would be kind of boring. But Rick is an interesting person because it's him being put in a place of, like, leadership, you know? Whereas in this movie, it's like... He's not really a leader, he's just a father, which we already knew from the start of the movie. If, if that makes, like, any kind of sense. I could be talking out of my ass right now, but I have a, a strong feeling that I, I'm making some decent to, to somewhat good points here. I cannot, like, see what's happening here. I'm really trying my best, though, I promise you. That was a great hit. Must have had that one, uh, like, triple shot thing proc. Opening up Mega Satan's door right there, by the way. Nice. Okay, get get these batteries out of here. Just get some room for yourself. Nice. Okay, stand back. Got his ass. Out of the way, please. Thank you. The hand out of here. Nice. Almost down to his next phase. Get some lag out of the room if we can. Lag clearing at the current moment. Oh, 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 we're dodging. We are dodging. Okay. Clear the path. You can actually dodge when the big tears come in. We're doing so much good work right now. You see this? Cleaning up all this city's scum. I'm gonna do this now. That does more than I thought it would damage-wise, honestly. I'm proud of that one. In fact, if I can move my body closer, I can get my sword in there. Like this. I can get my, my big old Spear of Destiny right into the Mega Satan's face. Now nah, I'm a little bit too far away for that, I think, actually. But it's good protection either way. You know what, dude? Get your, your Polaroid invincibility going on and just stand up here. It's gonna be a quick fight regardless. You have so much... Okay, you actually don't do any damage as that character. I, I disregard that. Why are we invincible for so long right now? 
Either, I'm, I'm happy to be, but like it's kind of confusing. We don't have um, Virgo. We're not getting hit at all. Okay, there we go. Get hit. You know what? Who cares? While you're charging, get in there. It's the Mega Satan strategy. While you're charging up, do some melee damage like that. Don't break. Okay, we win. GG, if you enjoyed the run and my commentary in today's episode, a like and a comment goes a long way for a smaller channel like mine. Here's to 500 more dads key pops, and I will see you guys in tomorrow's episode. Uh, join our Discord, follow my Twitch, all that stuff. But in the meantime, peace out and goodbye.